this evening. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of our candidates, MWPAC members, the panelists, friends, and supporters. We hope that this program will give our candidates valuable information and tools which they can use to run successful campaigns. Our program committee has worked hard to put together a number of panels tonight consisting of professional campaign managers and strategists, elective, elected officials who are eager to share their experience and knowledge, and representatives from news, political, and union organizations who will help provide information about how candidates can go about seeking endorsements. I'd like to take a moment before we begin to thank the members of our program committee who have helped put together this event. Uh, they include Eva Long, who has worked a number of years to develop this program. Eva, one a little wave. Barbara Matas, is Barbara here? Or did she step out? Okay, I think every, hopefully everybody knows Barbara. She's the chair of our programs committee. Um, our program committee members, uh, Ann Thomas, uh, Gina Brewer, Eleanor Kellogg-Smith, who's helped in this, uh, Tamara Hall, and Frida Zolan. I'd also like to remind our candidates and members about the upcoming Candidates Endorsement Night, which is taking place this coming Monday, September 12th, at the Santa Fe City Council Chambers. I hope everyone will attend and spread the word to your friends, supporters, so that we can have a large attendance. Lastly, I'd like to mention the, that October will be the 100th anniversary of women's right to vote in the state of California. Without the passion, commitment, and, ex and endurance of the women and men who helped to fight for women's right to, uh, right to vote, <clears throat> our organization would not be providing this valuable program today. And without, thank you. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Eva Long, who will be the moderator of this event. Thank you. Does this one work? Do you push something? Hello? You're on. Yeah. Okay, great. Good. Let me just tell you a little bit about our program. We've had a coaching program since about uh, 98, around there, which is many years ago. And some of you were probably in school, and some of you were probably just beginning your career. And some of you have been at this kind of coaching program over the years when you ran the first time. And some of you are at it for the third time now. So it's wonderful that all of you are here. The coaching program started because we felt that we needed to have a level playing field for all candidates, whether they were women or men. And so you do see that there are men in our audience because it means that, um, and I particularly was concerned about that, that we did not have people who were even uh, able to basically know what a campaign looks like and how to get started and so forth. And some of you may feel that way right now. And trust me, every day you're gonna work on the campaign in the next two, two months and two weeks. And you will be working day and night. And so when you feel that you're overwhelmed and tired, exhausted, it is exactly how you will be feeling. And so for those of you who are just starting, Think of the energy that you have right now, even a new race, uh, like one of our candidates, Gary, is running for mayor, and it's a new race. So your adrenaline probably is just all there, and if you're run running for a school board, first time out, you may not know your community as well as you think you might, but you're gonna get out there and you're gonna shake hands and meet everybody. As I was running in with all my bags and tricks, a man stopped me, smiled, and said, hi. I said, hi. And remember, when you're running, everybody is a friend. <laughs> and he said, what's your name? And I said, my name's Eva. What's your name? And he told me. And he said, are you Eva, the one on the badge? I said, yes, as a matter of fact. And he said, oh, what are you running for? 
I said, do you live here? He said, yes, I do. <laughs> and he said, uh, oh, college board, because he could see the pin, right? He said, wow, I'm honored to meet you. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm honored to meet you. And so we had this little tete-a-tete -tete for a few moments, and he said, well, I'm going to vote for you. <laughs> and I said, now remember my name. He said, oh, yeah, I can't forget your name. So it, it's interesting, because no matter where you are in the next two and a half months, a smile on your face, have your badge, the button, whatever it takes. I, I like the button. Those of you who met, remember Don Organ, he used to say, Eva, get the biggest badge that you can find <laughs> and uh, make sure they're able to see your name. Uh, uh, people refer to me as the Apple Lady, and um, they sort of remember, you know, Eva Law Apple. And um, uh, somebody was running at a, a different race when we were running for Central, Central Committee. And, and, and he was out campaigning with the least leaflets and so forth. And the person asked him, uh, who's running against you? And he said, well, uh, there's a person by the name of Eva Long. And immediately out of her mouth was, uh, oh, the apple lady. <laughs> okay. So if you begin thinking about your campaign, do you have some image that you want to portray? Because it's very <coughs> important that you stick with that image over and over and over again. Those of you who know a little bit about marketing, that's what it's all about. It is about what's your branding, what does your literature look like, what what do your uh, what does your stationery look like, what do your signs look like, and so forth. So, <coughs> what I want to do is kind of canvas the group. Um, Jonathan Leon is coming, and uh, but I want to be able to know, and, and all of you need to know who the people are. Okay, so I'd like the people to stand who are candidates running for election this fall. Perfect. And what I'm giving you an opportunity to do is I want you to spend about no more than one minute. And these are timekeepers. <laughs> I'll be your timekeeper. Okay, no more than one minute. I'd like you to do a couple things. Identify who you are, where you live, what office you're running for, and how many times you run a campaign and or whether this is the first race in a particular position. So, less than one minute. So, Lori? Uh, Lori Lopen, I'm running for Town of San, uh, San Anselmo, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. Town Council in San Anselmo, I have actually been on the Ross Valley School District School Board. Thank you. Next. I'm Samantha Sargent, I'm running for San Rafael City Council. I live in San Rafael in the Gerstle Park neighborhood. Uh, I'm Leslie Wachtel, I'm from Mill Valley, and I'm running for the Mill Valley School Board, and this is the first time I have run for office. But you're learning a lot because you have a relative. I do. <laughs> and uh, her husband ha happens to be on the town council of Mill Valley, mm -hmm. with the same last name. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Beth Peacock, and I'm running for Ross Valley School Board, and this is my first campaign. Great, good. <clears throat> yes. Hi, Jennifer Biume. This is the first time I'm running for office and I'm running for the Gerson School Board. Great. Two of you. Great. Hi, my name is Gary Phelps. I'm running for mayor of San Rafael. I uh, served on San Rafael City Council three terms, 12 years. And then prior to that, uh, I'm sure appreciate this, and I certainly did, uh, Dixie School Board for uh, two terms, eight years. I was on planning commission for three years. I'm pleased to be here and thanks for, thanks for having me. I did bring a badge by Oh, there you go. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joan Lissator. I live in Sausalito. I'm running for the college board. I served two terms on the county board of education, and I ran uh, for one for San Rafael City Council. Good. Thank you. <coughs> Trevor Hughes. I live in Fairfax. I'm running for the Lost Valley School Board, and I'm practicing kissing babies. <laughs> Jean Mariani, I'm running for the Nevada Sanitary District Board, and it's my first contested campaign. I was on the Sanitary District Number One of Marin County Board. We don't call it Ross Valley anymore. Um, <laughs> with John, with Eva for a while. Yeah. Uh, so. Many years ago. Not yeah. that many. <laughs> I'm Jane McDaniel. I live in Tara Linda, and I'm also running for the Dixie School District Board. Oh, cool. Yes, my first time running. Good. Ladies and 
and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Christopher Lang. I'm from Fairfax, and I'm running for the Fairfax Town Council. This is my third time around in 12 years or something. Uh, first two times, I didn't walk the precincts. Mostly it was about getting the ideas out and you know, getting the bare bones of a campaign started. This year, we're going to work really hard, <coughs> and uh, I look forward to the election. Thank you. Thank you. Any other candidates? <laughs> So those of you who did not get up as a candidate, you're either a speaker, which we'll soon meet um, as we get started, or other people. And so other people, would you please stand? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they must be in a couple of categories. Raise your hand if you are one, you are a one of you, that one day you're going to run for election. So uh, now you know. Uh, how many of you can you put up your hands if you are helping with the campaign? Fabulous. Good. Thank you for being here and being a team member. And um, I can't overemphasize <coughs> how much of a candidate depends on you to get the job done. Uh, I know we all have our team members, and it's really important that each of you can have that responsibility that um, uh, they can count on you. So thank you for being here. Um, let's see, team members can sit down for a moment. And then those that remain standing are spies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 um, running for House of Representatives in June, so just an early start. Good. What are you mm -hmm. running for? House of Representatives, U.S. For uh, Washington. Yeah. Terrific. And, we, and, uh, and your name? <laughs> Dr. William Courtney. Courtney. Oh. Courtney. Great, good, nice to have you here. Good that you're starting early. Yes. <laughs> and somebody else? Okay, now you know who your audience is. There are no spies here. They seem to be all friendly. And they will certainly, as the evening goes through, that we begin to support one another in terms of uh, the campaign we're involved in. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, I'm Eva Long, and I am on the college board. I in 1999, after I served some time on the uh, Ross, Ross Valley Sanitary District, and um, I thought I'd never. I, uh, somebody on the team this year said, uh, wrote, wrote me an email and said, "Run, Eva, run!" <laughs> Do you remember that from your uh, elementary days? And I thought, "Oh, that's great, run, Eva, run!" I thought I'd never ran so hard in 99. <laughs> And I have never had the privilege of being in an uncontested race. Mm -hmm. I have always been in a race where there are like eight or nine people running. So I, I get sharper and sharper as a result of that. And for those of you who are incumbents, one of the things that we have seen in the last two years is uh, two elections is incumbents are having more difficulty. And it's because New uh, incumbents have to defend their history. They have to defend their votes, they have to defend what they've done, they have to speak to whatever they have to speak to. New people, because you don't have history, not that you should make it up, but you, you only know what you know, and therefore you can say what you say. At some point, you're gonna have to defend what you have said, and we all do. But um, wh what we notice with new candidates, that they are high energy, they're articulate, they're well-schooled, they've studied the issues, they know what they're talking about, and they have done their homework and their research. And so, you know, that's just kind of a preamble to what does the new candidates look like. So all of you have a chance to practice tonight. Practice over and over again so it becomes very natural. Uh, I was at an event uh, yesterday, and I had to defend my own history, and I went this, to this event, I hardly knew anybody there. As I was checking in, they introduced themselves, shook their hand, and this person in the middle said to me, you're at, with the college board. And then said, and, um, the fact, you guys always pay those administrators way too much, like $300,000. I don't think that's our district. <laughs> but, um, and he said, don't say anything. 
<laughs> so, and I guess he could see my mouth about ready to move. And, and as a result of that, I thought, you know, Eva, take a step back, listen. And he said, I just don't think it's right that they get paid so much. You know, $300,000 is a lot of money. And then he rambled on for a little bit. And then he ended up with, now do you pay that person $300,000? <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was pretty, but that's pretty normal, you know. As you're out there and you're you know campaigning, they will tell you whatever's on their mind. So kind of expect that that that's all part of what goes on, you know, in the campaign. So with those words, I welcome you. I so honor and respect the fact that you have chosen to step forward and say I am going to do community service and civic work because there's honor in doing that. And I'm gonna end up at the other end of the program to talk about integrity, how you run, that you, you know, just get above the fray and just run a good race. And if you run a good race and you feel you're qualified, you'll win. And it's as simple as that. So with that, my <coughs> teammate is here. Jonathan, would you like to come on up? We're, we're going to talk a little bit about what does it mean to win? And what do you have to do to prepare? Part of it is the image building. And like, you know, what's your presentation? What comes out of your mouth? What are the words that you choose? What did you wear the day that you gave 10, 20 votes? Whatever it is. How did they see you at the door when you did, did precinct walking? How did you sound on the phone? Are you friendly, did it sound like a smiling face, and so forth. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that, and then we're gonna go into how you will dress for success. And most of you know most of it, but maybe you don't know all of it. So we'll, we'll uh, cover some of the pretty basic things that you need to be aware of. So Jonathan, you're on. Sure. If you'll introduce yourself. And sure. Hi, I'm Jonathan Leone. Uh, Sausalito City Council member. I was the mayor for two years, and it's my second term. Um, let me just ask a question. You may have asked this earlier. How many people are running for the first time? Okay. What are you crazy? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Uh, I, I'm glad that there's a good mix. So first of all, uh, what are the two things I did wrong tonight? What's one? I just walked in the door. What did I do? I was late, and Ava didn't know. Right? So, you know, I, started, I went to the city, got there late, you're going to have events, you're going you're to run late. It's just the reality of life. But make sure you have somebody planted in that event who you can get a hold of somehow to let them know that you're going to be late. So that's just, just word of advice, <laughs> number one, because it's going to happen to you. Um, as long as you have somebody there and something to eat and drink, you'll be okay for a few minutes while you're late. Otherwise, you're in trouble. Um, the second thing, okay, so I'm supposed to talk about two things. Uh, one is kind of presenting yourself, and uh, some of that's how you look or dress, and making sure you're you know, sort of event appropriate. Um, and uh, the second thing I'm going to talk about is a little bit of just getting ready mentally, what you should prepare yourself for. Uh, I've run now twice, uh, three times. First time I lost. I did it again, I was elected. Why? I don't know. Why I ran the second time. Third time, it must be crazy, so don't listen to anything I have to say. Um, uh, but, so I have sort of a little bit of war wounds to, to go by, both winning and losing. So I think they have to be part of those two. Okay, so uh, this is what I wore this morning. I wore this on purpose, so I'll get a picture of this game. So what did I do wrong for this event? What am I wrong right now? You're all kind of pretty well dressed. Well, that's casual. There you it's go. Abusive. Right? It's too casual. I'll store the outfits first. <laughs> so, um, it's too casual only because, for two things. One, for the shoes are a little casual for this setting, if you can see the shoes. Don't and I probably should have had a jacket on if I was coming to speak with you for the first time. Okay, that's okay. So, because you just want to show people that you really care that they came to listen to your, your nonsense, right? And it's, it's okay to be, as a rule number one I, I choose to follow and somebody gave to me, is it's better to be overdressed than underdressed, right? In any of the settings you're going to speak to people in, I'm sorry, you're trying to have your back to me. The other thing, try to find somewhere where someone doesn't have their back to them when you're talking. Um, so, you know, I should probably wear sort of a nicer pair of shoes than I have on that gun. 
June, but not as appropriate to this level. I actually have a jacket on this. So. Yeah, I don't necessarily need a tie for California. You know, it's, uh, it's not uh, a formal occasion, so it's okay um, in this setting. Uh, the what I would always when you go to a setting where you're you may have a barbecue or something that's cocktail before you go outside. Okay, so what do you do then? Well, you know, for men, I'm not going to. Maybe it's going to take the women's side of things. I'll stay away from that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I have under here a set of khakis and uh, just kind of a tennis golf shirt. Well, I don't know if that's so appropriate. Okay, this is what everybody's probably wearing something of this effect. Don't wear shorts, number one, if you're a man. <laughs> okay, then generally your legs are not that compelling <laughs> to begin with <laughs> for any of us. A sex, and two, uh, it doesn't create that sense of I'm taking you seriously. Please take me seriously, uh, no matter what shoes or socks or flip. Don't wear flip-flops, probably. Um, so why is this important? It seems very superficial because you you only get one shot at making that first impression with someone. What you're wearing, unfortunately, and all of us do it, uh, carries some message across. Okay. Now, if if this was when you go in front of uh, these folks later on in your campaigning, you get endorsement from an event, or if it's a more formal setting, or if you're having a party of some kind, and you know, make sure you wear, um, for men, a suit and tie, obviously. I didn't wear this today because it was too hot, but, uh, you know, and white, okay? Where do you wear the blue and white and whatever? I sound like this is not my personality, by the way. Uh, this is just unfortunate learning. Wear white. You're going to have your photo taken. You're going to be on, do the cable broadcast TV thing because you've got to worry about the contrast. Okay, why is this important? In your campaign materials, it's important. Uh, if you get a shot in the IJ, your headshot, it's important. Just to, you want to make sure your face stands out so they can connect the name to the face, and, and that'll help you. You know, it's just building that impression. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality of human beings. Okay, <clears throat> what's the other thing to uh, take away from this? I don't have this on at the moment. Make sure it fits, okay? <laughs> if you haven't taken it out of the closet in a long time, <laughs> check that out first. <laughs> take it from me. And if you only have one suit or one jacket, make sure you definitely um, take it out and try it on. Doesn't fit, you're gonna get it tailored or check the style, especially for men who are not conscious of style at, the, at any point in time generally. Make sure you're not wearing, you know, some uh, your leisure suit from the 70s, okay? So that's not gonna cut it. Um, and make sure it fits you and make sure you know you have something you're comfortable in. That's also very important. Don't put something on that you're gonna be standing up in front of people and you're tucking at your collar. Like I wouldn't wear a tie with this shirt, shirt sleeve. Maybe I've expanded or the shirt has shrunk. I don't wear a tie with a shirt uh, because I'm going to be constricted. I'm speaking, so I want to feel comfortable. Uh, but just keep those two rules in the back of your head. That would be a little overdressed and underdressed. And make sure you're not, you want to say that you're serious, but you're not trying to necessarily stand out through your clothing. Okay. Now, um, the second thing about that I wanted to convey about your appearance, how shallow as it may seem, is that. You're going to be walking up to people and saying hello. You better be doing that. It's not necessarily the most comfortable thing for all of us, depending on your personality type. But get that down. You know, be comfortable with that. As someone you don't know and have a couple of different intros, because you might be saying hello, and then someone's over here five seconds later, and you say the exact same thing, mm -hmm. it's going to come across as not being genuine. You're going to be on autopilot. So you're just trying to make it through the, the moment, right? So you won't. You better make sure you have that training a little bit. Sounds a little forced, uh, but it, it makes a big deal to people to feel that you're talking to them individually. Now I'm trying to make eye contact with other, each of you. That's another thing to make sure you're trying to do. Slow down when you're speaking. You know, I'm a little rushed because I just came in here. Make sure you slow down. I'm a little wound up at the moment. I was just battling the traffic in the photo one. It's better be late and take a minute out in the hallway before you come in. So whatever you're running for, for, whatever campaign, whatever type of campaign you're running, whether it's a local district or it's a citywide or a countywide thing, uh, the, all those principles apply. It doesn't really matter uh, what level of politics it is. 
Now, as far as, I don't know if you want to go through your war go first. Or yeah, let me, so that was I'll the turn the uh, <laughs> female perspective over to, to Ava. Thank you. Um, the one thing I always try to cover is time is very, very precious. You should not have to spend time thinking about what you're going to wear. You should have three outfits picked out in advance so you know what it is that you're going to wear. Number one, a suit is very appropriate for a woman. I brought something that uh, the weather is not going to hold up, but uh, as soon as the weather gets colder, I'll change into a dark navy blue, you know, very standard business-like uh, uh, wool suit. Um, uh, one of the comments that um, uh, Jonathan made was very important that if you wear colors well, that you in fact use color, particularly if you do the taping with ADU, the, uh, the League of Women Voters, because it's generally, I forget what the background is, but uh, if you are able to wear colors, it's nice to be able to have some color tone or a tie or whatever so that you do stand out a little bit. Uh, but if you're not good with colors, then it's better to be conservative. So uh, we, we're still having a lot of warm weather, and it's hard to wear you know, a wool a jacket or whatever. But something like that would be appropriate for a, you know, very, a house party or whatever. Uh, I generally go a little bit more formal with a, a, a basically a wool suit. Um, th this is what I always um, talk about. If you're going to something in between, for a woman, the blazer is the best solution, or a pantsuit, or something that is uh, easy to put on and take off, you can wear it with a sweater, you can wear it with a blouse, whatever the case might be. But the important thing is you're not spending a lot of time thinking about what am I going to wear. I actually had longer hair right before one of the uh, campaigns. I went to a uh, stylist and I had her cut my hair. It was pretty uh, risky to do that, but it wound up being okay. But whatever your hairdo is, do it you know, a couple weeks before you have to you know, make, make your appearances. The next thing is there's something that's casual, and with this particular outfit, you can wear white pants, you can pick navy blue skirt, uh, three quarter lace skirts, whatever you want to do. Um, that's something I would wear to a picnic and something more casual. Uh, I have to admit, yesterday was so hot, I actually put on a sundress with a, a wrap around it that was comfortable for me. But with hot weather, it's re a real problem of you know, going a little bit too casual, but, but it works. So uh, choose your uh, garments wisely, depending on the audience. In Marin, keep in mind, 50 to 60% of the population are people over 55. They tend to be seniors or early seniors, but they are very conservative in their dress and so forth and so on. So um, uh, be cautious for that. Also with that, I always have a hat, basically a visor. And I have a sequin hat that always catches attention. Uh, I wear my button and, and so forth. So a lot of times it's good if you can get a little attention, not too much, but with something, uh, I'm thinking of bringing my dog some of the events because people love dogs. So, you know, whatever is meaningful to you, you know, you might want to try some things out. So with that, we'll put all the clothes away and then we'll go on to the next part. So maybe the uh, third thing I didn't do right is get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I did call my stylist, but he's out of town on vacation for two weeks, so I'm out of luck. Um, just turning 40, you know, I didn't have gray hair. So the first question I got in a lot of rooms was, why is someone so young? Why should someone so young as you be our city council person? Well, you know, never forget the fact that Bill Clinton and Barack Obama and a lot of other people have been president. And when you're close to that age, um, that's the general mindset that you're going to hit. Okay, so uh, you quickly get gray hair if you do get elected. <laughs> you have to deal that with your stylist, probably. Uh, in my case, I chose not to. Uh, I still have hair, but the uh, but so going on to the to getting ready for things. So you filed your papers. Um, you know, you kind of got a couple of people who are sort of gung ho and going to help you. How do you get ready? Uh, certainly, uh, the, a button is a good thing too. But um, and uh, believe it or not, I, I didn't get buttons. I held off for two elections for buttons. People want. 
some small number of people want bikes. And uh, even if they don't, they want to give them to somebody else. Uh, and they're expensive, but they're worthwhile too. Like, uh, if you have a good little logo, it, it comes out well. As far as you getting ready personally for things, and I'll, I'll talk from personal experience for two, three campaigns. Um, first of all, it's a drag. It is a drag on you for the next few months, if you haven't run before. It is draining <coughs> emotionally. Um, it is a time sink. It's a sponge. It'll suck up whatever time you're willing to give it. So you've got to prioritize your, your life and set aside some things that you can put off for a little while um, until say, after November. Otherwise, you're going to drive yourself crazy and you won't do a good job at any of the things you want to do. And that would be my first word of advice. Secondly, um, try to think of all the horrible things that could happen to you ahead of time. <laughs> because then you will be somewhat mentally prepared for them. At least uh, you will have, you'll never get the exhaustive list, but at least you'll have a list of things that, okay, I thought about that, I can reply. So in the case where Abel was talking before about the guy who went off for 10 minutes, about $300,000 salary, I'm sure she got that question before, she was ready to go with an answer, have that in the back of your head. You know, go through your life experience, and don't, in this day and age, do not think that people will not dig for stuff from you. And go back to the internet or find somebody who knows you or check with your, what your degree was in, because that's happened to me. You know, and try to discredit you somehow, even if it's not true. Even if it can cast a little bit of color on you that's not accurate, okay? And if you weren't, if you had some, you know, if you put out a piece of material that wasn't exactly 100% the way, you know, it was published somewhere on the internet, you're gonna be in trouble, right? So just get ready for that. Whatever you put on your ballot statement or on your mailers or whatever, be ready for that. I've made that mistake and I've also had people turn it four ways on Sunday in a totally different message. So I would prepare for that as well. So whatever happens to you in your life, just take it or take an evening and think back through it because you're gonna get, somebody's gonna come out of somewhere else that you never knew existed. But that sixth degree of separation from the person you, you punched in elementary school or, <laughs> or you took their lunch money or whatever it is, it's gonna come out somehow. Um, it may not, but just be prepared for it because that's what you're, you need to be prepared for the downside uh, of things. The upside is you know, you'll meet some really great people um, you'll meet people you didn't know before. You may find you'll carry away friendships that you never had, but before. But the uh, the, the thing to get ready mentally, I find, is that I found is to just say, you know what? I know this is going to be a tough slog, uh, but I'm going to. It's only two months, you know. Really, um, I can do it. And just get yourself on that track. Now, if you exercise or whatever, I find that the walk. If you're doing a local race. Even if you're doing a, a, a larger race, you know, walk. Definitely walk, knock on doors. It lets you get out some of the adrenaline and the more anxiousness, and you'll probably lose some weight doing it too. I mean, that's happened to me each time. Uh, it comes back again, but at least you will have uh, had that experience. Um, and also, just make sure you've got a core group of people. The most important thing I can tell you is you have a core group of people who you believe in, who you can trust, who are willing to <coughs> offload some of those responsibilities, and don't be afraid to offload them. They're not gonna do exactly what you would do, but believe me, you can't do everything. So you need somebody to help you, um, and whether that's you hire someone to help you with some of the details, or you hire some folks who are ready to hit the, the pavement for you, or you, you know, get a group of people who are ready to hit the pavement for you, uh, help you organize things, whatever. That's, those are the, my good advice, those are the two most important things. Prepare yourself for the downside, and prepare yourself with a group of people who can help you. Now there are people who are going to say, I'll help you. So you call them up, send them an email, you never hear from again. So you have to take the time to go through those folks. But those, I think, are the two most important things to get ready. Um, and, and not to sound too dire, <clears throat> but it really is, I think you turn this into a positive experience, even the negative sides of things, if you prepare for it. I mean, it happens in, our, in a lot of campaigns that you know, if I can't defeat you on the issues, I'll defeat you in some sort of other obscure way of characterizing you as something you're not. And now, what I would also advise in speaking to people and speaking at events, and it's, I'm, a, look, I'm Italian, I'm a very emotional human being, so I would say you gotta get ready to control yourself. 
you know, when you know somebody is just wrong, or they're telling something that's not true, or they're criticizing you in a way that, you know, if you were in a different setting, might be uh, dealt with differently. Because um, that's gonna happen. And uh, so you just, you know, you have to make sure you just step through each step and don't trip along the way. Um, and the last thing I'll leave you with is that make it fun for yourself. You know, make it so that you can look back and say there were a couple of things along the way. Every day, do one thing. You know, whether it's had a little just ice cream that day that you haven't had in a while, or something, because you got to make it through every day. And uh, and have you know, you're going to have this plan. You're going to have all the things you want to do. You're never going to be able to do all the things you want to do to run your campaign the way you want because you have so much money, and so much time. But try to make one thing a day a little time for yourself, or else you're really going to wear yourself out. That's my, my two cents on getting ready, uh, Ava, if you want to add to that. And we're about ready to wrap up this. Uh, one last thing is uh, in terms of don't even think about your women, their jewelry. Have them all set out so you know exactly what you're going to wear, what outfit, what colors, and so forth. Jewelry is probably one of the most outstanding things women can do in terms of what they wear. So, you know, select those well, and um, always ask, you know, a buddy or another person, what do they think about how he's dressing? Uh, I used to have a wonderful mentor named Valerie Humphreys, who was a legislator in Hawaii, and she lived in Sausalito, and she always would say, I don't like that skirt, or I don't like 